You access Google Cloud VMware Engine through the Google Cloud portal. If you're a Google Cloud customer, this will be familiar with to you. Uh, on the left-hand side, there's a menu of all of the vast Google services that you can use as building blocks for your cloud application. Let me just highlight a couple of these complementary services before we jump in. Uh, one is Google Cloud uh, Compute Engine. Compute Engine is a VM as a service running on Google servers. This is a great place to run administrative uh, applications, things you want outside of your VMware environment. So in a demo in a second, I'm gonna be logging into one of these servers. And as you can see, one thing that makes Google Cloud unique is it gives you uh, a global view of your infrastructure. You don't have to first choose a region when you log in. You can see all the virtual machines that you have running, the instances in different regions, all in the same view. So I really like that about Google Cloud, makes it easy to use. So we'll be logging into this machine in a minute for our demo. And then another service that I'll point out is, well, there are lots of great network services. Let's say you need to set up a new DNS zone, you can use Cloud DNS instead of building your own. Uh, you need a database as a service, Cloud SQL is there. And Cloud Storage. A pretty well-known uh, way to put data in the cloud is using object storage, and that's what Google Cloud Storage offers. And here I've created a bucket, and I put some VMware templates in there in the OVA image format, as you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, log into a, that compute engine instance, and I've mounted this bucket as a virtual file system, and I can have access to those same items right there. So I'm gonna be using those for a demo here in a second. So that's a quick overview of some of the uh, adjacent Google Cloud services, but let's get into VMware Engine now, because that's what we're here to talk about today. We launched the VMware Engine portal off of the Google Cloud uh, console there. And after it comes up, we can see a quick summary. Uh, maybe the first time you log in, you won't have any private clouds. You can see I do have one here. Uh, so the first thing you would do as a new customer is create a new private cloud. Private cloud is a complete software defined data center with the hypervisors, the management, the storage, the network virtualization, all set up automatically for you in under an hour, half an hour, uh, ready to go. So you, you simply provide the, the information you see on this screen. I won't go through this whole thing because I already have a cloud I'm gonna show you. You can choose one of the regions. You can decide if you want a single node environment, which is perfect if you're just kicking the tires or you wanna run some tests and don't wanna interrupt your existing infrastructure. Or you can uh, start up with a, a full-fledged cluster, three to eight nodes. Uh, you know, we give a 99.99% uh, uptime SLA for these uh, clusters, so they're ready for your production workloads. And you can customize the cores. If you have legacy software that's licensed per core and you want to set up a cluster that has uh, fewer cores per socket, you can do that, or you can leave it as a default. The main thing you need to plan out with your net network team is your CIDR ranges that you want to use for those management addresses. That's important if you're going to be integrating with on-premises infrastructure later on. But for now, let's go back. Uh, we don't want to set up another cloud. We already have a cloud. So we'll jump over there. And this is my private cloud. You can see the, the dashboard, the overview here. Uh, one thing you'll need to do right away is get a copy of your password so you can log into vCenter later. Same thing for NSX, that, that's automatically generated for you. You can change it later if necessary, but that, that's how you obtain the login credentials first time around. And then another thing that makes this platform unique is it has the ability to elevate the privileges. So that cloud owner account lo that you log in with, it can generally do all of the day-to-day -day administrative tasks that you need in your virtual environment. But if you need to do something else like set up Active Directory authentication and you need additional privileges for that, you can elevate your privileges for an hour or two while you go do that task and then you're done. And speaking of that, we've got demos on VMware Cloud Tech Zone to go walk through things like set up Active Directory authentication and much more. So check out VMware Cloud Tech Zone for more demos after, after the session today. Uh, every private cloud gets its own pair of DNS servers and those are used by the infrastructure, but you can also take advantage of those uh, through this DNS profile configuration. This is just another way that you can integrate your existing environment with your Google Cloud VMware Engine environment. You can set up forwarding based on uh, domain or subdomain, and then you can point to your existing enterprise uh, DNS servers on-prem or elsewhere. But the main thing we wanna focus on today is the management network. This is how you access vCenter, NSX, uh, HCX for migrations. 
And as you can see, these are private addresses and private domain names. That means you need to have a VPN or other connection into Google Cloud in order to access these things. And that's for security. Uh, you don't want to go over the public internet to access something so critical as your uh, virtual infrastructure environment. So we're going to pop open the vSphere client. It should be very familiar to VMware administrators. Here we have a pretty fresh install. If we take a look at the VMs, there's really nothing in here. I haven't created anything yet. So one of the first things you might do as an administrator is uh, jump over to the content library. And you know it's easy enough to, to click through here and add some ISO images or some OVA templates. But what I'm going to do is show you how the integration between the Google Cloud infrastructure and the VMware infrastructure can help you out as an administrator. You know, I've got those OVA images that I've already uh, made just the way I want. So why don't I um, you know, use some Power CLI scripting, which is very familiar to VMware administrators. And this is not a session on Power CLI, so I won't go into the details here. But this brief little script, what it's going to do is it's going to add that OVA to the content library. We're going to create a VM folder, and then we're going to loop through these numbers, these integers here, and create a new VM based on that template that we just loaded up. And then when that task is done, we're going to go ahead and start them up with a customization spec that I've already created in advance. So if I run this, and this is a live demo, so hoping it's going to work. As you can see in the background, we do have a task already kicking off. So I'm going to cut back over to my browser, and we can see we, we have an OVA uh, image called Photon coming into the library. You can see there it's starting to get created. If I jump over to my uh, VM tree here, you can see it's already done it. It's created a VM folder called Photon, and it's already made those five clones. So as you can see, it's very high performance, running very, very well in this environment. Nothing else really uh, there yet to slow it down, but uh, those machines are going to power up here in a second. While we're waiting for that to happen, why don't we jump over and take a look at the next thing on the list, which is NSX. So VMware NSX, also known as NSXT, uh, is it's the networking for your private cloud on uh, VMware Engine. Great thing about NSX, if you've never used it before, you're going to have some learning to do. But the good news is Google has already taken care of all of the hard part, which is architecting it, designing it, deploying it, configuring all of the underlying infrastructure. All you need to do is come in and set it up for your particular use cases. So the main thing that you'll need to do is log into NSX, a nice little topology view. You can see those VMs that I just spun up. Uh, you can create DNS services, DHCP services, all, all the things that you expect to be available in a networking environment. But the most important thing when you're getting started is to go to segments, create a new segment. Now, I've got a full video on how to create this on VMware Cloud Tech Zones. So go check it out. But essentially, you, you fill in these fields accordingly, uh, choose your IP addresses for that segment, and then uh, you'll be ready to go. I already have one here that I've created, and that's the one I'm using for the demo uh, for the rest of the session here. Very easy. Uh, you can create as many segments as you need. These are virtual networks in vCenter. But the good news with NSX is you might not need to create that many networks after all, because NSX includes a wonderful capability, micro-segmentation, uh, which is called a distributed firewall in the, in the interface. Micro-segmentation allows you to protect and prevent or enable virtual machines to communicate with one another, even if they're on the same network using the same uh, IP address block. You, it works at the virtual NIC level and not the guest OS level. So the, it doesn't matter what guest OS is running inside these virtual machines. You can control traffic to and from individual virtual machines based on policy. So a typical use case for that is to prevent web servers from talking to one another. Usually, if you have a cluster of web servers, there's no good reason for one web server to talk to another one, right? But if we can prevent that communication, it can limit the attack uh, radius that an attacker might be able to exploit if they were able to break into one web server. And this can contain them in that one web server and not be able to spread out. Of course, we also have rules to enable communications with the app servers and database servers as needed for the environment. But you get all that as part of the service. And this is a great thing about uh, subscribing to Google Cloud VMware Engine. You get the best of VMware and the best of, of Google infrastructure ready to go. So here, just to show you that network, 
now has those virtual machines connected to it. If you created more segments, they would show up here under networking. You could mm -hmm. use them for your virtual machines. So that really covers what we wanted to talk about today in our brief technical demo of the service. And I just want to highlight what we did here. We used a Google Compute Engine, VM, with VMware PowerCLI software running in there. So those are working together. We took Google Storage, Object Storage. We put VMware templates, OVA images on that. So they're working together. Then we have Google physical servers running in Google data centers. That has the VMware stack running on there. So we had all those things working together in harmony to create a very easy to use, high performance environment for you to manage your business applications without having to worry about that underlying infrastructure. It's all available for you. Okay, so again, I just want to remind you to go to VMware Cloud Tech Zone, check it out uh, on the web, and we'll have a whole bunch of demos there for all kinds of different topics.